I know you. You're the viewer. Well, you're back again on the Coaching Corner. I'm R.J. Adams, and today is Point Counterpoint. This is where two actors have competing ideas of what the method or technique should be to get to their work. On the right, we have Jamie Green, and on the left, we have David Farkas. Nothing but trouble. So let's watch and see what uh, what's on the agenda today for acting techniques, point counterpoint. All right, first I want to talk about rehearsal. Rehearsal? Yeah. Who does rehearsal? Uh, anybody that has time to do rehearsal, they do rehearsal. Who has time to do rehearsal other than... Can I talk about rehearsal first before we talk about who does rehearsal? Oh, okay. All right, first I see two main reasons why uh, rehearsal is good, okay? One... Uh, you get really comfortable with the dialogue through rehearsal so that when you actually shoot the scene, okay, you, you can really just throw it away because it's, it's in your body. It's really comfortable. You're comfortable with all the blocking, okay, so it's just organic. Mm -hmm. And two... Um, organic. Yeah. Rehearsal it, it's, it's organic. Well, it becomes a part of you because you've already practiced it. Okay. So when you shoot it, you can be totally free. You see what oh, I'm saying? Okay. You don't know what you're talking about. Organic means freshness. The more that you rehearse something and say it over and over again, you just kill all of the freshness that's going on between you and the other actor. No, no, no. Organic means that you, you it's so in you that you don't have to think anymore. You can just kind of go because it, you, you've practiced it already. So, so there's no... Well, there's if no you memorize your dialogue properly in the first place, then it would just be there anyway. So you wouldn't need to rehearse it in order for it to feel organic. You but, would just already know it. But there's and so many other things you. going on, you know, the, the movement, the different stuff happening, you know, maybe you're eating. You're talking about the theater, okay? Theater, you do, I get. I see how you would want to rehearse in the theater so that you could work on projecting, making sure you're getting everything out to the very last row. But in film, you need, it needs to just be between you and your partner. And if it's rehearsed, it's dead. There's no freshness, there's no vitality, there's nothing that's going on between the two of you right then and there. Well, that, but that's the challenge of the actors, to keep the freshness. Don't put that on me in rehearsal. Now, you're saying theater. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, come on, you're gonna, hey, if you're gonna do 10 takes in front of the camera, you know, what's the difference between 10 takes in front of the camera and five rehearsal and five takes? You know what I'm saying? It's still 10 takes. In film and television, the production costs are so high that they want you in and out. If you're exactly. gonna cut right, so so why not get it right and then you don't have to do as many takes. Those takes that you're talking about, those little maybe mistakes that you're talking about, maybe making if you don't rehearse, that is the magic of film and television. Mistakes Period. and the magic. Yes, th those are the magic. They're called happy accidents. You. It's what happens between no, two no, actors no, when they're really engaged no, no, in each no. other and they're listening <laughs> and they're just hanging out together having a conversation. The magic happens when you're so comfortable with everything that you can let your juices flow. <laughs> well, I guess your juices should be flowing and you should just be comfortable with who you are before you ever step on the set. You keep talking about juices flowing and happy accidents. Are you sure you're not talking about some kind of massage? <laughs> <laughs> Can we move on to emotional preparedness? Yes, let's move on to emotional preparedness. Okay, let's good. grace me with your knowledge of emotional preparedness. Okay, well, my first thought on this is actually an anecdote. I know you like anecdotes. Mm -hmm, okay, I remember I was watching an interview with Tom Hanks. Okay. Same, Private Ryan. You've heard of him? Uh, before that big scene where he cries in that little foxhole, you know that scene mm -hmm. where he cries, really memorable scene? He said, he was saying that Spielberg told him the day before you know, you're going to be crying in this hole. And he, he was saying in the interview how much he appreciated uh, that heads up so he could prepare for that moment, right? And so he's got to find that place. Uh, nobody else is there. He's got to go. There's action, and then he just cries. You see what I'm saying? So his method, he had to, he had to draw on something to get that emotional place and, and, and yeah, yeah, he had to draw on the fact that he was in a foxhole and all the men that he's surrounded by are being killed and slaughtered and murdered. I can't tell you what he was doing, but first of all, it's not sense memory, it's effective memory. And that's a Strasbourg method, and if you're gonna talk about it, at least know what you're talking about, okay? Okay, you're right. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Emotional preparedness for something like that is probably just being prepared that you're about to be in a battle. That's all you need. If you are living in the reality of the situation, that the production company has set up for you, which they do a fantastic job of, then you don't need effective memory. 
And I'm saying that sometimes if it's not set up for you or it's not there right in the reality that you have to draw from the past in order to get there. And that's my point. And I say live in the moment. That's my counterpoint.